So when we are trying to make a decision and we're not sure what decision to make, we have a part of us that really wants to, for example, move to a different country, right? And experience that adventure. And we have another part of us that really wants to stay because we're really connected to our family and we don't want to leave. Now, when these two parts are so extremely opposite that can create a lot of conflict and a lot of stress internally and um, that's just a testament to the fact that actually we do have multiple sub-personalities within our mind so with within an ifs session we really dive into our inner world and we're able to discover the different parts of us that have been there for a long time doing really important roles hey welcome back to soul awakenings with madia sosan podcast today we have olivia victoria pondana olivia is a survivor of childhood trauma turned into IFS therapist, speaker, inner child healing workshops host and founder of FEM, community of female empowering in Manchester. In 2024, she's also launching her first book about self-healing after 10 years in the self-help space. She's on a mission to shine a light onto others and help anyone she comes into contact with to step into their own inner power. She doesn't take BS and speaks her truth even when it's hard. Let's bring her on. Hi, Olivia. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. How are you, my darling? I'm doing amazing myself. Like you looking gorgeous <laughs> on screen. Thank you. I put my lipstick on for you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I love it. I love... Red lipstick is amazing. I love it. Um, How are the Bahamas? Oh, it's great. This is Bobby. So those of you who don't know, I'm pointing at Bobby right now, my my tree, <laughs> palm tree. And he's with me in every interview. Nice. Hi, yeah. Bobby. Hi, Bobby. All right. Bobby's like, what's up? Your shadow self. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right, let's get into this. So obviously, I know who you are, Olivia. Our listeners don't know who you are. Tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, what do you do? Brief overview. Hello, everyone. Hello, dear listener. Um, my name is Olivia. Uh, I am an IFS therapist, uh, internal family systems. Uh, I'm also a speaker. I run workshops, uh, inner child healing workshops and IFS workshops. Um, and I've also got a property business on the side. So keeping very busy. Oh, I also run a female empowerment events uh, in Manchester, which are incredible. Yeah. Can you tell the listeners how old you are? 24. Wow. Look at this. She's doing so much at age of 24. And we're going to obviously unravel everything in this podcast. Um. So what was your childhood like? What was your environment? What? what was good what what is olivia's personal life oh so we go in there straight away. there straight away yeah this is this is what this podcast is about <laughs> what was the most traumatic experience that you've ever had <laughs> yeah tell me <laughs> that, that's you that's you on your first date <laughs> yeah that's me on my first date yeah 100 <laughs> percent. what's your trauma have you healed the trauma have you looked at your shadow <laughs> Are you going to project it onto me? No, no, no. I'll say and listen and hold space for you. Amazing. Amazing. Right. So where do I start? So I grew up in Poland and then I moved to the UK when I was 12. So let's say the first few years of my childhood weren't the prettiest <laughs> ever. So I grew up in an environment where my dad was working with the mafia. Uh, so you can imagine uh, what that must have been like. It's probably somewhere like the Godfather <laughs> movie. Um, yeah, but there was just yeah a lot of violence, a lot of uncertainty. Um, my mum was really young. She was 18 when she had me. Uh, my dad was 10 years older than her. 
And yeah, it put her in some really dangerous situations. It put me in some dangerous situations. Um, I was kidnapped once. Um, I think I was like free from the nursery. Um, there was a lot of uh, emotional abuse, uh, a lot of physical abuse that I witnessed, uh, sexual abuse as well. So all three um so that obviously didn't set me up very well didn't really set up my nervous system for the most peaceful and joyous <laughs> life so i think i've always shown signs of depression uh, from my childhood i think there's actually just one picture from my childhood where i'm smiling and my mom has told me multiple times um, that I was a very grumpy child. Um, obviously, it makes sense uh, considering what I went through, but it wasn't until I was 14. I was living in the UK. I didn't know the language, which was pretty difficult in school, that I tried to actually take my own life. Uh, and when I did that, they realised, oh, maybe she needs to speak to someone. <laughs> so... Yeah, that was a really difficult time for me, for my family, because I suppose in Poland, people don't really go to therapy. People don't really do inner child healing or, you know, healing on themselves. People kind of just toughen up and you deal with life. Um, so I was actually really glad that I was in the UK um, because they gave me lots of different forms of therapy. So by the age of 14, I had CBT therapy, then I was having person-centered counseling, I was having uh, EMDR as well. So lots of different types of therapy. I was also put on lots of medication. I was under a psychiatrist, um, which probably wasn't the best idea because I don't actually remember three months of my life at that time because the medication just completely numbed me. And it was like, okay, let's just put it on some pills and not deal with the actual trauma that she went through. So after that suicide attempt, after I started therapy, I got really obsessed with personal development uh, my mum gave me a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And that book probably saved my life because after reading it, I didn't try to take my own life again. Before that, I was self-harming. I was literally planning how I'm going to die every single day. And after that book, I really, I was really open to the idea that I can take control and power of my own life. I can take power and ownership of my mind and I can actually create the reality that I want no matter what I went through as a child. So I got really into affirmations, reading lots of personal development books. If you're watching this on video, I've got lots of amazing books, color coded, obviously. <laughs> Um, I really got into podcasts, meditations. I was literally trying everything. And over time, it did work. It really put me in a more stable place. And it was really interesting, actually. After I had the suicide attempt, I remember I was still in a really dark place and I started reading the, this book and suddenly I had this vision, it was like a calling that I was going to help other people and really use my own pain to help other people go through that pain and really turn it into their power. So it was almost like a quick awakening to my soul's purpose. And yeah, since then I've been on that path of healing myself, healing my trauma, and learning all the healing modalities that I can get my hands on. Mm, wow, that's uh, such an incredible journey. Um, are you still in touch with your dad or uh, is he? <clears throat> your... No, no, I'm not. So, so he actually went to prison uh, when I was free because of all the stuff that he's done. Um, I actually never found out the real reason why, because at, on that side of the family, everyone just keeps things as a secret. 
Mm -hmm. and like they pretend that everything's fine so it's really interesting actually because I was seeing some of my family last week I was in Poland and my uncle mentioned something that I look like my dad but it's a blessing that I don't have his character and my grandma just completely denied that anything ever happened and she was like why what's wrong with him like he's an amazing man (laughs) and I was just there like okay okay so for her it was so traumatic that she's not even able to process the information and what what had actually happened so yeah he went to prison and then he came out when I was I think I was 10 I did have some contact with him and he seemed to be okay at that time and then he went back to prison and he came out just before my 18th birthday and I actually remember going to Poland when I was 18 to see my great grandma I walk in her apartment and there is my dad and he wasn't there to see me because he had no idea that was coming he was there to steal from my great grandma because she had a beginning of uh, dementia Mm. so luckily I was with a male friend so I got him out of the apartment and I haven't seen him since Um, I did receive a message last year that he's back in prison so I have no idea what's going on with him Um, I actually really feel for him because it's not that he was just terrible person he's done a lot of terrible things however it was because of the trauma that he went through as well and I have actually made a lot of peace with that Um, and I don't hold a lot of resentment because I know that trauma is often passed generation to generation to generation and it wasn't the safest environment for him either you know my grandparents when they were born it was the world war ii in poland so you can imagine you know the type of environment that children had to grow up in um yeah so i don't know maybe one day i will speak to him but at the same time i'm at peace with the fact that he's on his own journey and he chose to be here in this life for a reason and you know he gave me a life at the end of the day Mm. so I can be grateful at least for that Mm. and I guess it's like what you're talking about is the generational trauma that is passed down that your dad your sometimes our parents cannot heal that on their own so you you are the one who has to take it on you are the one who has to heal it and you are on that path of healing like you said like what sort of healing have you done what sort of modalities have you tapped in obviously internal family system but like emdr what sort of things were coming up yeah and also one thing i will say is we don't have to heal it we can choose to step up and do it but at the end of the day you know it's our choice and for me when i saw certain patterns when i was growing up i promised myself that my life and my future children wouldn't grow up like that they would grow up in a different environment so I really believe in healing my own shit (laughs) before (laughs) I do have children because I don't want to be passing on those burdens to them um in terms of my healing journey so probably the first thing was self-help I was literally obsessed with books I must have read about a thousand books uh, in the last 10 years like I'm constantly reading new books so that gave me a lot of tools and do you know what's interesting that in the first few years from the age of 14 probably until the age of like 20 21 I was really obsessed with personal development. I was listening to motivational talks every day, doing visualizations, meditations. I was doing energy healing, Reiki. I was going to lots of workshops and classes. I was taking courses online. Mm. I was going to all the events. I was doing all the chakra healing workshops, literally anything I could get my hands on. And then I realize that actually a lot of the time person development can actually become 
an, an addiction. We rely on it. Escapism. So, yeah, yeah. We rely on it so much that instead of projecting that fear onto our parents and feeling like they should be the ones to save us, we then feel like we've taken responsibility. But actually what we do is then project that onto the person development space and be like, okay, so this is the person, maybe Tony Robbins is the person that's going to save me from my trauma or Joe Dispenza is going to be the person that saves me from my childhood. Mm. And it's like, all those techniques are amazing and they literally saved my life but at the same time it's still taking your power away Mm -hmm. when you give in that to another entity Mm -hmm. to another technique you know and from my healing journey it wasn't until I discovered IFS that I truly realized that I can be my own healer that I can actually access that innate healing power that my soul holds within me that I don't need to be going to all these bloody classes and workshops and events like I can just turn inwards and have internal conversations with myself with the parts of me that feel overwhelmed with the parts of me that feel sad or feel angry or feel guilt and actually almost reparent myself and be that leader that I always needed Mm. yeah I completely agree and I guess like there is a you had your awakening I guess at age of 14 that is what awakening it can it can be um obsession into something it does feel like we when you have your awakening you're completely obsessed with spirituality because you're trying to make sense of the change of uh perspective seeing things in new pair of eyes and that becomes your oh my god self-development but I what I always say is like you have to be extreme on both ends to get the balance so when you first start off something extreme to the going to the workshops and Tony Robbins and personal development and you know all of that is like is needed for you to realize that actually the power is within you that's what you're trying to say right the power is within you um and they workshops is like just uh like knowledge but it's actually like you taking action on that what do you do what are you going to do about it yeah 100% yeah. so that like from from the age of 14 so you you're diving in so I guess that was your transformation from a really dark place right have you had some like waves of breakdowns or what what are you what are your thoughts on breakdowns what are breakdowns to you great question um also I feel like I had my awakening when I was born and not at the age of 14 (laughs) um yeah like going to spirituality I was always like connecting with spirits and Mm -hmm. saying things that my grandma would write down and be like whoa okay um I used to organize these like spirit circles in school and all the children would get together sit in a circle we'd call on spirits and guidance wow yeah I was I was like six and seven (laughs) oh wow so you definitely were your mom uh was she was she spiritual was was she in that kind of world yes but she's in denial (laughs) (laughs) all right great (laughs) yeah so actually so when I was really young she would read books like the power of your subconscious mind as my bedtime story she wow. would read like really heavy psychological books and I'd be like done with a few Those minutes. seeds were planting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were. And it's really interesting because obviously I went through that really dark time where I, I literally didn't see the light. I didn't see hope. I was like, this is the end. Like, I want to die. Mm. Um, I went through that. But like, I think subconsciously I knew that somehow I could take my power back that I could actually heal from all of this because whatever we go through doesn't define our future. It doesn't define who we are. It's an experience. It's shit. It's painful, of course. But at the same time, we can choose our future. We can choose differently. Mm. And I'm not saying that some things are not horrible. They are. But Mm. still, we have that choice. We have that power. 
Um, and I forgot your question. <laughs> it was the break. <laughs> what are, what are your thoughts on breakdown? Breakdowns. I love a good breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> we all love a good breakdown, don't we? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like a level up. <laughs> I'm celebrating in my breakdown. <laughs> it's like, it was my piece of cake. I was like, yeah, crying my eyes. I was like, yes, come on, we're doing this. But it is mm. true. It is true that breakdowns are often breakthroughs in life. That mm-hmm. is true, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually telling one of my clients this today. I was doing an IFS session um, and sometimes I like to throw in some quotes. um, And yeah, that person was in a really dark place, like the darkest they've ever been. And I was like, actually, it's really shit in the moment. But a lot of the time, our breakdown enables our breakthrough because when we are so low that we can't go any lower, you can't go anywhere. Like you can only go up. You can only, you receive a different perspective on life when you are that low because you're like desperately wanting to get out of that, you know? And I think Romy has this beautiful quote that the wound is where the light enters you. And I truly believe that. Um, Throughout my journey, I've had multiple breakdowns. (laughs) I hope hope we all have and I'm not the only one. (laughs) (laughs) No. And we yeah. all, that's why it, like, it's, it's a, such a beautiful um quote and also there's another one you have to keep breaking your heart until it opens mm-hmm. that's another good one right um mm-hmm. and so it also is like in terms of relationships as well we often go through these breakdowns where oh no I'm not lovable wound of abandonment w- w- fear of rejection I guess in your case you have you dealt with wound of abandonment because obviously they say that from the day you're born until the age of seven is really important for you to form an attachment with your caregivers and yours were not it wasn't consistent it was abusive mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so he's asking about my attachment style now yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting one because I feel like it has changed over time. So when I took the test initially a few years ago, it was disorganized. So it was both anxious and avoidant. So anxious attachment style is when you cling on to people, you want to resolve things, you're really fearful that they're going to leave. And the avoidant type is where you have an argument and you don't want to speak to that person. You want to avoid, you're scared of getting close to people. So for me, throughout the years, I think it really depended depended on the person that I was in a romantic relationship with. If I was with someone that was anxious, which was my ex-partner, I was really avoidant. I was like, I don't want to spend time with you. I don't want to touch you. <laughs> <laughs> just get away from me you know just constantly wanting to escape constantly wanting to leave and then when I was with someone that was avoidant then I became more anxious and I was like reply to me right now and like sending 20 messages <laughs> like please reply to me uh, okay maybe not that extreme but you know um yes yeah, so I became more anxious and I've been doing a lot of real deep work over Mm. the last probably 12 to 24 months and I took the test uh three weeks ago with uh, a very dear friend Francesca oh yeah she's coming Mm -hmm. on the podcast Mm -hmm. as well yeah yeah I know I know (laughs) (laughs) and it turned out that I'm more secure with some anxious now which is really interesting because it really shows that when we're able to do that work consistently and not just go to a therapy session then just fucking leave it for five years, like actually commit to doing the work every single day through increasing our self-awareness, through choosing differently in the moment, we can actually change our attachment style. Mm. And I think it's a testament to internal family systems, IFS, and like the true healing power that it has oh yeah 100 percent. like I completely agree because when I was in the relationship so we're going into the relationship I was starting to do that work I had fear of abandonment quite a lot and then I was doing the work on it but when I was in the in the relationship I was 
with an avoidant, which was triggering because you know how it is. But what I was doing is I was going in IFS sessions and session after session, I'm getting triggered. I'm, I'm, I know it's my wound of abandonment. I was working on it. And it's quite interesting because like I've got two points here. Basically, it's really interesting. I went to this attachment style um, event in Manchester. Oh, yeah. How was that? Oh, that was great. So what she what what I took out of that is fearful avoidance often have abusive past Mm -hmm. most of them and then I was like looking through my dating scene and the people that I thought were faithful avoidant majority of them had uh, abusive past and it's Mm -hmm. quite interesting Mm -hmm. that you've just mentioned about you were faithful avoidant um Yeah. yeah so doing the test now it's I'm getting the same test it's like it's uh, mostly secure but with anxious mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah. it's, doing that work is so important yeah it's it's honestly so interesting um and I love this stuff that I think there's there's even research on have you heard of ACE ACE no ACE uh, adverse childhood experience uh, test um, so I'm scoring like maximum on that really? test. Really? Yeah, yeah. I must do yeah. it. Yeah. I will wear it as a badge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's research that people who score really high tend to have disorganized attachment styles mm. because when you do experience a lot of abuse, you don't know how to respond. You almost become a chameleon where you try and be anything just to stay safe because you have to read your parents your caregivers behavior you have to read their body language there's a lot of uncertainty and you're trying to predict what they're going to be like so that you can change in order to avoid abuse wow wow that is that is big Mm, (laughs) that is big so I know you work part-time for the NHS but let's talk about internal family system because that's what we've been talking about throughout this podcast (laughs) what is it you're trained in it what is it yeah IFS is a beautiful healing modality it's a form of psychotherapy and that was developed by Richard Schwartz uh, 40 years ago now Um, So it's probably been around the same time as modalities like CBT in the NHS. And it's, yeah, it's crazy that CBT is given to everyone and IFS isn't, but it is changing. Yes. (laughs) I can tell you that. (laughs) So IFS is... I suppose let's look at the model of the mind. So in traditional psychotherapy school, in traditional psychology, we see the mind as a single thing. We believe that we just have one mind. And if someone feels like they've got different personalities, then we put them into a box and we say that they've got multiple personality disorder, um, which is now called uh, dissociative uh, disorder. Yeah, which is really interesting because it turns out that all of us have multiple personalities within us. So, for example, when we are trying to make a decision and we're not sure what decision to make, we have a part of us that really wants to, for example, move to a different country, right, and experience that adventure. And we have another part of us that really wants to stay because we really connect it to our family and we don't want to leave. Now, when these two parts are so extremely opposite, that can create a lot of conflict and a lot of stress internally. Um, that's just a testament to the fact that actually we do have multiple subpersonalities within our mind. So with Within an IFS session, we really dive into our inner world Mm -hmm. and we're able to discover the different parts of us that have been there for a long time doing really important roles. So we break it down into three different types of parts. So we have managers, 
our managers are the workaholics, it's the perfectionist, uh, it's the part that really wants to manage all our life, micromanage everything. We also have firefighters. So firefighters come in when our internal managers are not doing a great job from protecting us from feeling pain and distress. So a firefighter behavior might be going out and getting drunk, drunk, taking lots of drugs. A firefighting behavior might be gambling. It might be self-harm. The most extreme firefighter is suicidal parts. So when I had that suicide attempt when I was 14, that was a firefighter at its extreme. Mm. And that's basically when the whole internal world all of our parts are like I've had enough I don't know what to do to escape from this pain so I'm just going to end it all and it's a really difficult job um, for that part Mm. and the third one is exiles so all of our managers and firefighters when they're extreme they're there to protect our exiles our exiles can almost be like inner children within us that hold the burdens of trauma. So for example, when I was three, I witnessed my dad uh, trying to kill my granddad with an axe. So because of that, I had an exile, which really held onto that trauma, it froze in time. And because the pain was just too much to process, And in order to hide that, our managers and firefighters come in. Mm. So for me, it was constantly being busy, never stopping, never allowing myself to take a moment because what if I did and something happened, something unpredictable happened? So I would always plan out my whole week, minute by minute, every single minute would be filled in my calendar and there was no room for uncertainty because uncertainty meant danger Mm. literally potentially someone dying Mm. so that was my manager that was protecting that exile and my firefighter was when I was 14 it was going to drugs smoking lots of cannabis I was actually addicted to cannabis and it's really interesting how a lot of us say that it is just medicine and we can smoke every day, every night. It's addiction. <laughs> it's your it's addiction. Yeah. It's addiction. Yeah. At hundred percent, it does have healing qualities, but when it's extreme and you are smoking in high school and then college and you have to smoke before you go in, before you go home, that's an addiction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's just, let's just yeah. get that, get yeah. that clear. Yeah. So I've that been was saying my... this for ages. Like, yeah. yeah, I've been saying this for ages, but in a spiritual community, it's an mm. addiction. It's, it's... Sorry, yeah. guys, to break Sorry. it to you. Sorry. Love you lots. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that was my firefighter trying to take me out of my body, almost dissociate from the trauma and create an altered state of consciousness. So I didn't have access to that. And it was really interesting because I didn't remember about that trauma until I was in an IFS session and suddenly I went to this part and the memory just opened. I actually completely forgot about that experience Mm. and that was really intense. But through the process of IFS, we really build the trust with our managers, with our firefighters, and we gain their permission to be able to work with the traumatized part. What a lot of other therapies do, like for example, CBT, we are taught to go straight away to the trauma. In EMDR, even though it's an amazing technique, it really hasn't worked for me because what EMDR does, it bypasses our protective mechanisms and it goes straight to the trauma. Mm. So actually, think about it if you were protecting a child right there was a child that was really sick right and you went to the shop to get the child some medicine and someone came in and started treating that child you don't know that person 
you have no trust with them you have no relationship when you come back from that shop of course you're gonna be so angry you're gonna be calling the police like who the fuck is this person touching my child and giving him medicine right it's the same thing with our internal world that's why we take the time to really build the trust with those protective mechanisms and only then we go and care for the child We help that child realize that it's stuck in that time, that it's frozen. Mm. We often let it know what date it is or how old we are today. We allow that child to really see us for the person we've become, for the person we are today, the power, the wisdom that we hold. And we're able to help that child release all of that energy that it's been holding on to and come back to the present moment yeah and the work doesn't end there the work continues because every day we can check in with that inner child we can do things that are really nurturing for that inner child so for example for me there are certain polish chocolates that i love and whenever i eat them it's like i'm reconnecting to my inner child (laughs) because i love those chocolates when i was young right and it's like little things like that maybe it's a song that you heard when you were five when something traumatic happened and it really gave you a lot of comfort it's like reintroducing that so you can constantly connect with that child because again if you had a small child you wouldn't just leave it on its own no you You just wouldn't yeah no and it's the same thing with our internal world so yeah IFS is literally changing lives it's growing like crazy it's like a miracle to get on the training I know I know I put my name down to to uh to get trained and level one at the moment I'm still waiting (laughs) but yeah it's I honestly I've been in in and out of therapy throughout my life right everybody knows my my story but it's like this therapy it just it just feels like it processes it there and then and you know you see that child version of you mm. when I got on to dear Gabby and I was struggling with that five-year-old that you were on that call um I know I sent you the link I was like I'm receiving a <laughs> message from the spirit that Maddie is gonna get picked and I sent Maddie the zoom link and she gets on and gets picked You're yeah welcome. exactly yeah thank you very much Olivia <laughs> being that messenger <laughs> yeah and um like really literally a day before I was battling with this, this a five-year-old me where I had the exa- same experience and traumatic recently tra- traumatic experience that I, I experienced and it's really interesting what Gabby said and really hit home because I was recognizing it obviously she just laid it out it's like you are now seeing that five-year-old you that was just tucked away not seen and heard you are now witnessing it and it's so it's so amazing and it's also so crazy that your parts the they get stuck knowing that you're a five-year-old you're a six-year-old you're 11 year old you're a 15 year old and you're living your life as if you're you're that and you're playing all these patterns out all these protecting uh protecting me- mechanisms i you know for you you've you've had the the you know you were uh, taking drugs and you were taking you know you were that was your firefighter and my firefighter wasn't any of that but it was extreme gaming so it was like i was from eight o'clock nine o'clock in the morning or whenever i wake up when i was like pushing all this like uh, trauma down me I was like playing playing till the night right and then get up next day play every time there was an emotion uncomfortable emotion which was my exile pain trauma that was wanting to be processed I was pu- pushing it down and at the same time what was happening was I was feeling so anxious I had severe anxiety to a point I could not leave the house because of all of that trauma, that exile. I was in that five-year-old, that that three-year-old, that that eleven-year-old, the thirteen-year-old, fourteen-year-old was was crying out to be seen and heard. Yeah, and of course, if you're a three-year-old, you're not going to leave the house on your own. No, it's crazy. 
it's oh, it's crazy good. <laughs> it's crazy good, and I really, really hope that this therapy just um, makes it everywhere because it is. It, in my own experience, I've seen the transformation in your experience, and I'm mm. sure in your clients' experience as well. Yeah, um, yeah. It, I, I can say that it is slowly being introduced to the NHS. It's been approved in certain areas of the UK, not in Manchester yet. <laughs> We will get there. <laughs> but we're working on it. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so it's really powerful and it's literally growing like crazy. Most IFS therapists are not even taking any more clients. Most of my IFS friends, they're fully booked. They're not able to take anyone on. Um, and it's just a testament that it actually works. It, like, I believe it's probably the only therapy that's actually effective. Yeah, really. And it's very holistic as well because I've seen Richard mm-hmm. Schwartz... Um, going in with a with a patient who was seeing spirits so that is yeah. interesting it's a very holistic mm-hmm. approach as well mm-hmm. yeah very yeah open. yeah it's definitely really spiritual and there are yeah there's really deep spiritual work that you can do in ifs mm-hmm. you can go to trauma that's been held by generations um if we want to go woo woo I can definitely go there yeah let's go this is the soul awakenings with Madia Sosa this is a spiritual woo woo okay podcast. we're not holding back that's amazing <laughs> no, everything out in the open yeah honestly like I actually had an experience uh, three weeks ago with Christina Batty who's also an IFS therapist um who's been on this podcast give her a listen yeah, woo woo oh. <laughs> yeah so we we're having a session and we we came across, there was a few different protectors and then I do a lot of work. So they do have trust in me when I, when I go in and we went to this exile and this inner child, I think I was probably like five in that image. And we went in. So also for context, IFS therapy often happens in meditation. So it's like a deep process. That's really visual a lot of the time. So he went in and this exile was holding this burden, but it was like a really thick chain. And on that chain, there were dead bodies and there was like hundreds of them, right? Just like clinging onto that chain. And, you know, we asked that chain what it was and it was actually a legacy burden. So it's something that we work with in IFS as well. So it's basically generational trauma when things have been passed on through the DNA. We have those parts, we have those burdens within our subconscious mind. A lot of the time we just don't have access to it and it comes out in really small ways. Um, So for me, it was really coming out in feeling irritable and like feeling like like this masculine energy was taken over. And I found out that it was the all the burdens on my dad's side, you know, and it wasn't even my dad's. It was like great, 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 great Mm. granddad's. Right. So it was really deep. And it wasn't I wasn't able to let go of that in the moment. And then suddenly I saw this vision of Callie. She just came through really yeah. strong with a fucking humongous axe and she cut off that chain. And then I was sick. Really? In the session? Yeah. I ran to the bathroom. Yeah. And I was just like purging all that wow. energy. It was really intense. And I can't tell you how light I have felt for the last three weeks like I do not see any of those patterns in my day-to-day and I can tell you I've been triggered multiple times to make sure the universe was like making sure that it's not (laughs) it's not there anymore and it's just not it's just like this the only way I can describe it this like this peace this inner peace that I've been feeling since then and a lot of people actually said to me that I look different since I came back from Poland because it was just before before my trip mm. um yeah so we can definitely go there um we also work with something unattached called unattached burdens in IFS um, so that's uh, spirit possessions. Uh, I'm actually reading a book on that at the moment. Um, so 
I suppose like in our Western world, we don't really talk about spirit possessions, but they're very real and they happen all the time and they don't have to be this dark, crazy, scary thing, Mm. which society tells us it is. Um, For example, in South America, it happens all the time. And do you know what they do? They just release it. And like, that's that, you know, they don't make a huge deal. So we are actually trained to work with the unattached burdens as well. Um, And I have released uh, two myself, Mm -hmm. um, which was a very physical experience. It was a being that, when I told you that I used to do like spirit circles right I call Mm -hmm. on the wrong fucking spirits (laughs) (laughs) and it it just attached to often those energies will attach to our traumatized parts because they feed off that that fear energy right Mm -hmm. so it was feeding off that all those years and that was actually that was really destructive that was the part that wasn't part of me that was an unattached burden that wanted to destroy me that wanted to destroy everyone else and in my IFS session it actually voiced that it wanted to destroy me and everyone else and then we're like okay it's not part of the system um so we made sure and then yeah we really released it with light I suppose the main thing when working with unattached burdens is just being in love, just sending them back to love, sending them back to where they need to be. Mm. Because as soon as we introduce parts that are fearful, we're not able to release it because it will just feed off that energy and we can't create love with fear. It just, it just doesn't work. Right. No. No. So yeah, in that session, it was really intense. I was like coughing up, I was sweating. um, And suddenly Jesus came to me. Like I saw Jesus lifting that energy. It was like, it was really black in my imagination. So he literally lifted this energy, opened this portal and then sent it back to the portal wow it was beautiful and instantly I just felt this love and peace and joy and like wow okay like I can breathe again I can let go so yeah so maybe this is why we don't do it in the NHS (laughs) (laughs) well true like yeah but I suppose like I mean, because it's coming round, it's touching a little bit, you know, because, you know, most of us in our society, we're scared, we're fearful of Mm. not just the system itself, we're scared, we're scared, we're we're fearful of things, we're fearful of labels, you don't want to get branded as like bipolar label, we we don't want to get branded as like possessed, or possessed, that kind of thing, so we numb it. So our firefighters, I guess, are quite strong. That we don't, they don't like let you know that. Oh my God! It's like I'm experiencing, I'm seeing spirits. Mm. There are many people who see spirits. Many people who see spirits, but they they get branded like labeled as certain like a, a mental illness when it's not. They just yeah. they're just not being seen and heard mm. by the system. by people around them yeah it literally breaks my heart like having insight into the nhs it literally breaks my heart because i do often assess people that are experiencing psychosis which because of the label that it's wrong that there's something wrong with them it does become really destructive because of the way they're perceiving that energy right whatever we put out we get back so if they're really fearful and they think there's something wrong with them they're projecting that through the gifts of being able to see energy and they attract certain energies back to them Mm. and it's honestly heartbreaking because how the system works I'm not able to do a full spiritual IFS session with someone, right? Like mm. it's it's just not going to work. Like imagine I'm in a, in a GP surgery and someone starts like I don't know, like 
coughing or, or crying or you know someone overhears us doing some spirit <laughs> spirit yeah. work yeah. Yeah. um yeah so they get sent to a psychiatrist they got get put on lots of medications and it is really heartbreaking because for example in certain parts of south america and africa they see it as a gift they nurture that gift they're able to give people the tools to be able to work with the energies that they're experiencing the scene but here in the uk that's not a thing we think those people are crazy and we just exiled them from society mm. oh yeah 100 percent. And, and and actually it's not just single person that's doing that it's a collective burden within yeah. the culture collective trauma <laughs> mm. that only like some of us are coming in and healing that I was watching a TEDx talk by I can't remember his name but he was talking about exactly the same thing as you you're uh, saying that in the east is it is it a spiritual awakening or is it a mental breakdown and mm-hmm. he was talking about in the east you're it's it's perceived as spiritual awakening you're given the right tools practices and um everything and you become kind of a master in it right you're mm-hmm. on whereas if you experience the same thing in the west it's completely you're you're labeled as something wrong with you medicated and living your life like in a such a physical and emotional state where you can't function anymore Mm-hmm. and it's it is true it is true I am seeing more and more of that that kind of leads me on a the next question surrounding yourself with people mm-hmm. who upgrade your life right so if you are experiencing all these things spiritual awakenings and seeing certain things and you're surrounding yourself with people who don't do not believe in it what do you think is going to happen I think it depends because I often see it go the other way where people cut out everyone in their life and they start judging people who don't believe in spirituality or are not spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. They only go to spiritual events and they only surround themselves with spiritual people. And it's like, why? Like everyone has so many gifts. Everyone has so much wisdom in their own right. We can have our own beliefs, you know, we can believe in new age, old age spirituality, and at the same time, be able to learn from people who are different from us. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I was in this trap myself Mm -hmm. a few years ago when I first began my person development journey, because at the time, probably had a couple of friends that actually got spirituality they got personal development and everyone else was pretty toxic they were just really emotionally abusive and like putting me down all the time which was just me choosing to be around them to repeat the trauma that I went through as a child but you know let's not (laughs) go Mm -hmm. there that that that's a a whole other story so yeah so 100% being able to surround ourselves with positive people people that uplift us people that believe in us in our dreams that will support us that will not take our shit but will call our shit out yes but at the same time if my friend is a christian and they're really supportive why would i cut them out of my life just because they don't believe in the same energy as i do yeah, yeah you know? true And I've gone for a whole journey of that over the last few years, realizing that, yes, I do want to surround myself with positive people, people that are kind hearted, people that are ambitious, that have similar goals and dreams. And at the same time, they don't have to be the same as me. They don't have to be getting Reiki healing every other month, you know? Yeah, because there's actually there's actually power in being able to be different, have different beliefs and be in different communities. And this is actually why my female empowerment events, I open that up to everyone. I will. I don't really believe in doing just spiritual events because it almost 
closes off the spiritual community to the rest of the world it, and, and it becomes the us and them okay. and we think we're all enlightened but actually are we because we're so judgmental over everyone else yeah very you true. know very very true like it's like is the divide the fear of the divide mm. like like lgbt straight um black white like it's like the this country this country like it's it's so much of that that's a collective yeah. fear yeah. of control as well right and it's 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 true like you you have to I think the balance is like I I'm I'm kind of learning this right now as well like I need to have a balance of both like mm. even people who are aren't like on a spiritual path and people mm -hmm. who are it's quite interesting but what you have to be careful is that people who are very much abusive like it's like toxic you need mm. to cut them out yeah. you know you could have a friend who's not even into spirituality, not even whatever they follow and they're supporting and loving. They're the people and they want you to keep on growing. Then they're the people that you want to be hanging around with, not with the people who are um, bringing you down and, you know, sucking that life out of you. Because, do you know, do you know what just came to mind? <laughs> We often keep around toxic people in relationships because we believe they are our soulmate, they're our t twin flame. Oh my god, they're abusive, that's they're my thing. twin flame. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I've realized this now because I was like in caught up in like twin flames. Oh, that's interesting. I want that connection, I want that connection, but ultimately, I found out it's actually trauma bonding. <laughs> yeah like what what does that even mean if someone is hitting you if someone is abusing you if someone's belittling you like realize that it's trauma trauma bond. you're attracted to them because of the trauma and it's not a fucking spiritual assignment no <laughs> I, I I agree I do agree on that I think this is where like you know i i was telling uh, gabby on on day gabby as well it's like i don't want to see good in everyone love and light because because we bypass that judgment somebody can you could be not everybody is a it is a, there is narcissism like there is that kind of um projections out there in the world but what we do is with with the love and light it's great but we we can't like you you bypass because they could just come and straight and abuse you and you're still sending them love and light you have to at some point stand up for yourself yeah right yeah oh my god i don't want it. this yeah i don't want this interview to end <laughs> this is crazy let's never end let's never end <laughs> 24 7 live stream <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna look like that. um <laughs> Okay, so what's your vision? What's next for you, Olivia? I mean, you're 24 and you and you got so much wisdom and knowledge. I mean, you're going to be like Buddha at the age of 50. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> the trauma <laughs> life. I'm still yet to experience. Yeah, go on. Um, so what's your yeah, vision? It was, it was really interesting, actually. I, I managed to get on the Gabby podcast as well. Yeah. And she was saying how in a few years I'll be sat on a podcast like she is and I'll know that everything happened for a reason that everything just worked out oh um, brilliant. yeah it was it was beautiful yeah. she actually got a message from my spirit guides and they were like clapping and I was like oh, oh my god yeah I remember listening to it, it was, I know, oh, I know. Dear, so good me. so good yeah. um go and follow Gabby Bernstein everyone <laughs> yes she's amazing <laughs> Yeah, so my vision, my vision since that suicide attempt has always been to be on stage and just shine my light onto others, to be able to really crack them open so they can receive that light. They can realize that my own light is just a projection, a reflection of 
their own light that's within them. And that's always been my vision, you know, to travel, to speak on stages, to really open hearts and help people realize their own inner power, help people reconnect with their soul, with their inner light. Um, and with that, write books. I'm writing my first book at the moment. Yeah. So it should be out in 2024, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. It will be on self-healing and our power to be able to do that. Um, also, something that I'm really passionate about is being able to do some work with children who are being sex trafficked. So one of my goals when I've got lots of free time, when I'm older and I've got lots of money to donate, to be able to actually fund special missions, to go undercover, to speak with the paedophiles in order to rescue the children that they're abusing. Mm. And that actually came to me in lockdown. I read something online about child trafficking and someone that does undercover missions and I was just crying and crying and crying and I didn't sleep that night and I was just having like all these visions of being able to do that obviously to be able to do that I need to be over 40 at least because no one's going to believe a 24 year old and um, they're probably going to kidnap me as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was just like wow like there's so much darkness and I'd love to just go into that darkness and just send a light mm. into it because mm. that's the real work, right? We can be all happy clappy at spiritual person development events, but actually to go to the darkness, go to the deepest and darkest part of the planet and stand in your light, that's the fucking work. That is the work. That is the work. I completely agree. Um, that is such an amazing vision as well. I think you are very, very clear in what you're gonna mm, do, and I, yeah. I, I do believe you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it because I, you, I know, it's I done. know you are because you are that type of person who will just get it done. That's mm -hmm. it. We'll, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to your journey. I really am. It's gonna be always. I mean, you can be having hosting like motivational, like like Tony Robbins, and like host yeah. mega events, and we can just collaborate. That's gonna be amazing. So, before we end the interview, I've got rapid fire questions for you. What is your definition of universe, God, life? Light, light and love. Beautiful. That's it. What do you think happens when you die? You need to read the book, The Journey of Souls. Ah, I it explains know. everything. Yeah. We go back to souls yeah. and we choose our next lessons and we progress and we help souls expand. We help souls energy, love energy expand. Mm. Um, that's all. Yeah. That's all it is. Another good book is uh, Dying to Be Me by Anita Murujani. She's hers is really good as well by she was i think she worked with wayne dyer as well um she yeah yeah read it read it like i'm not gonna explain it because it'd be like a whole podcast explaining oh, no, her no. journey um uh okay so how do you define a religion and spirituality that's an interesting one spirituality I feel like I used to have really strong opinions on these things and now I'm just at a point where everything Hello. is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. just let it be. Yeah. You know, with religion, it's like people like to have a certain idea to have maybe certainty over what happens. Mm. For me, spirituality is believing in all religions because there is so much wisdom in everything in all the teachings out there brilliant love it what's the lesson that took you the longest to learn hmm the ones I'm still learning and don't even know it <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't even know it because there's so much that we don't know 
Yeah. I don't even know what I don't know. And there are just constant lessons where probably in five years time, if I listen back to this interview, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, she was projecting. <laughs> she was so traumatized. <laughs> It's true. Oh my god, that's a really good answer. Um, do you believe that people with horrible beginnings end up creating the best futures? No. Yeah, but there's no. potential. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it honestly depends on you, on on your path, on what you want to create. Mm. Because sometimes people can have terrible upbringing I actually had a friend my grandma used to work with uh, children from um from children's homes mm. and there were children who were like abused all the yeah. time right and one of them she had a terrible upbringing and she actually died because she broke her neck mm. when she was 17 mm. so oh sometimes you know yeah. life is so unpredictable yeah true true um i'm fully in the present moment when when i am doing an ifs session oh love it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do you believe there is an end to healing no no yeah the very reason we're here is because we've got work to do. Yeah. And then we come back again. <clears throat> and again, and again, oh, and again, and again, and again. Oh, you know that twin flame trauma bond? Oh, it's telling me to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, the world needs more of what? Love. Beautiful. If there is one message that you would like to say to someone who's going through adversity, who's going through dark night, the soul, spiritual awakening and can't see the light at the end of end of the tunnel what would you say to them give yourself space that's it we give just we all need space to feel mm -hmm. to experience all the darkness and it's not always like that everything passes yeah and it doesn't change the fact that it is really shit in the moment yeah beautiful how can people contact you people can contact me on either instagram so my instagram is uh, o-l-i-w-i-a-v-i-k-t-o-r-i-a i-f-s <laughs> the longest ever olivia victoria ifs uh, or they can send me an email on o-l-i-w-i-a ifs at gmail.com i love or it go to my website that's gonna be in the bio amazing amazing i love it how you spelled all the letters out because it's easier for people that oh yeah i got it tick, tick, tick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> amazing yeah, yeah. amazing Oh, thank you so much, Olivia, for coming on. I mean, yeah, we we covered a lot there. I'm sure we're going to get you back in again with in, in future and talk about so much other stuff because you have so much wisdom and knowledge at, at the age of 24. And I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying that I know you're going to, yeah, there's going to, yeah, your future is so bright. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for coming on this podcast thank you so much my love like you're just this bright light that's just shining love and joy everywhere you go and I'm really grateful that we met at a public speaking event when we were both shit scared of speaking <laughs> yeah. five yeah. years ago it five, was five years, years ago Wow. five years ago and then we we organized the TEDx event in Preston as well and then from there on it's just again I say you surround yourself with people who want you to grow and people who who help each other grow right and not just say like yes to your yes call out your shadow as well and that's what we do as well you know you tell me <laughs> it was like no I was like okay <laughs> you're projecting again you're projecting. <laughs> no I think it's oh, important to call yeah. out bullshit oh absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. thank you
Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode. I would absolutely love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. You can share your thoughts on my Facebook or Instagram, Madhya Sosen. If you would like to listen to this episode, I am on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Just search Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosen. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends as that will help me out a lot. Thank you so much once again, and I will see you in the next episode.